I said, what do you mean I read? I said, oh, come on, all these dummies around here read the sports pages. What are you doing with a book? It's the non-recognition by other people that gets it. To say a man is just a laborer, or a woman just a housewife, it bothers you sometimes, you know, when you're picking up that steel. To know that maybe it's going to be a car someday. And some guy you're never going to know is going to get into that car and never think about you. I think about that guy sometimes. There he is, living out in the suburbs, driving his air-conditioned car to his air-conditioned office, just sitting back and enjoying the ride. So where the hell is the hiring lot of things? He does this everywhere. He just couldn't take that long to pack a cab. I think he likes to drive around up there, listen to the radio. And well, not only that, once he finally does take your cab, you don't know what the hell he'll do to it before you get it back again. I've been parking cars for 32 years. In my younger days, I was the best. Could drive any car like a baby, like a woman change her baby's diapers. Well, I still get customers say, wow, you sure can drive. How long you been doing it? <laughs> I say, I started when I was 16, and I'm still doing it. <laughs> All my days, cars. All my waking hours is cars. I drive my car to work in the morning, and when I get here, it's the customer's cars, and then I drive my car home again at night. But when I go out, my wife drives. <laughs>
every morning at the tone the time will be 9.15 and 40 seconds. I'm a secretary. I'm a sales manager. 
I'm a corporate executive. <laughs> well, when someone asks me, I say I'm Nora Watson. At certain points in time, I do things for a living. Good afternoon. I control the time of being. One o'clock exactly. Thank you. 
I told you, pass them out away from the door. I told you before. Hey, Jim, how's about a break? A break? You got a break the day you were hired. Jim, what's your name? I'm Brett. I'm Nate. There's a few of you checkers. You're really nice. There's that one that's incredibly sad. Pam? She was saying how she wanted to go to school and get teaching credit. But she can't because her hours are wrong. She can't get her hours changed. Yeah, she's not bitter. If she dies, a checker and never enriches her life. That's okay because those are her hours. I'm a checker and I'm very proud of it. I'm not ashamed that I wear a uniform or nurse a shoe and it varicose veins. I look forward to doing work and I enjoy it. Something terrible. So whoever looks down on me is lower than I am. I have to be somewhere in 10 minutes. Can you hurry from bed? Look, if you wait your time, you'll get my full undivided attention. <laughs> when I should be ready to get nothing. <laughs> The music starts playing. Everything looks nice, everything looks fresh and pretty, but you're not aware that in the back room it stinks and there are people yelling at each other. They play music at the loudspeakers, the so you'll relax while you shop. People don't pay attention to the music, they're too busy shopping or hitting their kids. They're talking about those idiots passing the anti great petitions. All day long, people come out to the register and say, I just bought grapes for the first time because of those idiots outside. And I have to put the grapes in the bath and thank them for coming. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I bring the grapes outside to the car. Please, ma'am.
coffee shop and a friend of mine came by. She said, hurry up, I've got a cab with me. You can make $50 in 20 minutes. So we went to this penthouse. The guy up there was, well, he was quite well known. What he wanted was to watch two women make love, and then he wanted to have sex with me. It was barely sex. I mean, he was finished almost by the time we got started. <laughs> it was a tremendous kid. I mean, here I was, doing nothing. Really nothing. In 20 minutes, I was going to walk out that door with $50 in my pocket. How many of you make $50 for 20 minutes work? I was still in high school. It was terrific. Looking back on it now, I wonder why I was so quick to run out of that coffee shop and turn the trip. I mean, it wasn't traumatic, because my training had been in how to be a hustler anyway. Just as a woman. We were taught how to hustle. The language girls hear all the time, don't sell yourself cheap, hold out for the highest bidder. What I do is no different from what 99% of American women are taught to do. Well, I just take the money from under the lamp instead of in our hedge. <laughs> I do with 150 bottles of our fish a week. <laughs> it's a marketplace transaction. <laughs> I managed to absorb that when I was very young. I was a precocious child. Actually, I was very lonely. I didn't experience myself as being attractive. I, mean, I didn't look like a Pepsi Cola ad. I was smart. Didn't know how to play the games. Guys were mostly afraid of me. They didn't want to get involved emotionally, but they did want to ball. For a while, I was willing to accept that. <coughs> I was feeling intimacy. Feeling warm, close. You become your job. I become a hustler. Even when I'm not hustling, I'm hustling. What you do is what you are. I don't see what's so different from someone who works on an assembly line 40 hours a week and comes home cut off, numb, and dehumanized. People aren't built to switch on and off like water faucets. I work in a luggage factory. We make suitcases. The tank I work at is Square. In 40 seconds, have to take the wet felt out of the felter, put the blanket on to draw out the excess moisture, wait two, three seconds, take the blanket off, pick the wet felt up and balance it on your shoulder, reach over, get the hose, spray the inside of this copper screen, turn around, walk to the hot dry guy behind you, take the hot piece off and set it on the floor, put the wet piece on the dry guy. Push this button. Inspect the piece you just took off. Stack it and count it. Forty seconds. In the summertime, the temperature at our workstation ranges from 100 to 150 degrees. I've taken the monitors and checked it out. I have arthritis in the joints of my fingers, naturally in my shoulder balancing the wet piece. The hoses will sometimes leak and spray back on them. The hydraulic presses leak, so you're slipping on oil. You have the possibility of being burnt every time the wet belt hits the dry dock. You just engulfed in a cloud of steam every 40 seconds. The tanks run 24 hours a day. I work eight straight hours with two 10 minute breaks and one 20 minute break.
something else. My mind starts to wander to my days back on the bar again. See my father smiling at me, swinging on his arm again. Hear my grandmother's stories, storms out on Lake Erie, vessels and cargoes, fortunes and sailors' lives. Oh, 
But the stone did not close. <laughs> it's me.
from Milwaukee, you gotta call your dispatcher. And let me tell you, you're even glad to talk to him. Hello, Chet. Hello, Mrs. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Do the squat phone company. Operator 448, may I help you? Yeah, I just got cut off. I'm sorry you're having trouble, sir. May I have the number you were calling? Yeah, it's 519-762-5190. I'm sorry, sir, that number is busy. Jesus, lady, I was just talking to you. What's wrong with you guys? I'm sorry, sir. Perhaps the party was trying to reach you. Why don't you wait five minutes and then place your call mm. again? Sometimes you really want to talk to them. If they sound upset, for me it's a temptation to say, ah, oh, gee, what's the matter? But if you get caught talking to a customer, that's one mark against you. One man said to me, operator, I'm lonely. Will you talk to me? I said, I'm sorry, I just can't. But you can't. <laughs> I'm a communications person and I can't communicate. There's only about seven or eight phrases you can use. Operator, may I help you? Good morning, may I help you? Now the number you were calling, would you repeat that, please? I'm sorry, sir, that number is missing. I would like to call from so and so on. Please deposit seven times for the first three minutes. And that's all you can say. Anyone who has done hotel switchboard likes hotel switchboard. It's not lonesome. You talk to people. You ask another switchboard operator, they like it. It's funny. You're tired at the end of the day. It's not easy on the arms. So These cords are heavy weights. So let me and tell you, they get pretty so heavy at the end of the day. So many calls Sometimes you're just close to your finger. You go to plug in and it now breaks. So you try to be between your fingernails and then you break your fingernails. Do I listen to my phone conversations? I never listen to my phone conversations, but I'll tell you. Especially if you're working late at night. night Sometimes people in the line are so funny. They just sit there and laugh until the tears roll down your face. You like to go faster. Want to hear a good one? It was one in the morning and a phone call came in. So I said, Holiday Inn, because we're not Holiday Inn. I was just kidding around. <laughs> a good operator and we love you, but I don't know why you did it. So I just wanted to have a little fun. I always thought of a receptionist as the dumb broad at the front desk who answered phone messages. Well, now I've won, so of course I have changed my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> she had to be special, right? Because I thought I was special. I was fun until we had this office party. I'd be having a fairly intelligent conversation with someone, and then they'd ask me what I did. When I'd say I'm a receptionist, they make an excuse and walk away. So now I make up other names for what I do. Communications control. Servo mechanism. Uh, there is a 10 minute break in the whole day when the phone is ringing. You can't think. You can't read. I'll do drawings. Laundry, sort of. Things that are never people. I always like to pretend that it's alone and everything is quiet. I call it the land of no phone. I never answer the phone at home. Sometimes we can sit here as a joke. Wouldn't it be great to wrap this handle of phones and just yank them? We do think of it. You could just pull. Uh, disconnect them and see what happens. It's really something to run into someone who says, it's a nice day out, operator. How's your day? Busy? You having a rough day? You're so thankful for these people. You say, oh, yes, it's been an awful day. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Even when I get 
Dutch and have to go pee. Chickens up a desert, we have that. <laughs> Family that pees together stays together. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
can take your cash out of your sock. You fix the bed, you check the lock, you wind the clock. When I retired, a lot of people said to me, Joe, you got your health, you shouldn't have done it. Yeah, but it was too late. I don't know why I'm tired. It's just a habit, I guess. But I get no regrets. I keep busy, keep traveling. I go to fires every once in a while. And remember we had a new Milwaukee Avenue about three months ago? I was there. I was surprised that the smoke was pouring out of the building. The was all hell, but you couldn't see the flames. They must have had about 30 units over there. You hear about the news on the radio. Boy, that was some fire. Rubble again. <laughs> We're just 
I'd like a nice recreation room in the basement. Possibly a pool table. I hope my wife can play pool. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you're creating, and I just turned around and walked out and started to cry. Well, he followed after me and he said, wait a minute, I'm not creating these conditions, you are. And I said, no, no, I'm not the one who has the power, you're the one who has the power. Then I hung around the office the rest of the day, selling copies of Rising Up Angry. <laughs> well, I kind of gotten myself on unemployment. They were nice to me the first few times, then a woman told me to get a number. I went to the teller, fuck you, I can stand outside your door and knock you over the head and steal your money. <laughs> but that's bitterness. <laughs> I don't like being bitter. I am a pacifist.